So, like I said, John B. starting out. This little uh, inside zone split at a bunch. Really good against 6-1. One of the things that's really good against 6-1 is running the ball basically right in this little alleyway. If you can pick up the user, you can get a lot of yards. As you see right here, he goes to do it again. And everybody's using Tiki Barber in this tournament. A lot of people using Tiki Barber uh, before the uh, backfield apprentice abilities. And we'll see what uh, John goes to here. John, in my opinion, one of the best offensive players in the game. Puts really good route combos on the field. And um, very creative offensive player. So here we have a little streak, a little drag. He's probably trying to say if he's throwing this guy on a third, he can hit that quick. He actually had it, but he gets screamed at. And this is what 6-1 does. Right? And this is a lot of people running 6-1 right now because everybody's 99 speed pretty much in mutt. 97, 98, 99 speed. So these linebackers are going to scream off the edge. And so what you see here is on a first early down here, we get uh, a cover two beater here. And then we have basically kind of a cover three beater to a degree. And we're really looking for this little pocket that we can hit this, this drag in. Or if he's playing cover two, which a lot of people in 6-1 do, you see John actually is going to have everything open. So this guy is open right here, but he, he's trying to, the reason, the purpose of the streak, real quick guys, a lot of people like to put this safety on a hook curl to take that away. That hook curl can get pulled by that streak just enough to leave this little window open. The other thing you're seeing here is you get screamed at, screamed at right up the middle and he's blocking the tight end. This is what makes 6-1 so good is it can get in really quick, fast pressure. And John has to basically scramble, throw it away, and actually save a sack, which is actually a really big play because he is going to go for this on fourth down early on. And we'll see uh, see what kind of comes of that. Actually, I think I could do this. Let's do this with this bar. Can't get my, can't get my bar to move. It's a tough scene. Tough scene right now. There we go. We'll throw this down here. Okay, so let's see what happened on that last play. What, how did he dot him? Did he blitz him again? Let's see. So uh, Showtime, also interesting. You'll see a couple different variations. So in this variation, this is the show blitz variation of this defense. It brings the safeties down really nice for you. I personally love that version of the defense. There are some disadvantages to it. Um, and, and so you'll see Showtime do different things here. John actually goes this little slip screen. Now, the purpose of this slip screen is primarily or cross screen is for this little fade route. What he can do is he, he can use this fade route to basically roll out and try to hit this corner route right here. Even if this guy is in a quarter, he'll be able to attack that side. Not sure. Um, and then, and, and I think I would assume also he's trying to roll out so that he doesn't get screamed at. So that's kind of the, probably the thought process that he's got right there. Showtime only actually ends up sitting three and the cross screen. He actually uses this all the way. He's just a step behind. John hits the perfect pass and gets a nice possession catch. That's a tough window that could have been KO'd and he doesn't get that animation, but he does get that animation. And so, um, you know, now we're first and 10 and the ball is on the 29 first drive for John beast. Let's see what he does here. Kind of an interesting play. Not sure why he did that. So this is double post. Is it double posts or verticals? This is actually a setup out of verticals. So this is out of verticals. This wheel route is going to pull the flat early. So like, let's say, let's say for example, that Showtime is going to put this guy on like a cloud flat. What this does is this will pull that cloud flat and then he'll be able to throw the ball in this little pocket right here. The other thing that will happen is let's say this guy is on a quarter. This wheel will clear out that quarter, allowing him to throw this short corner kind of right in here. It's a great little route combo. And then obviously we just have a clear out streak to clear out like any hook curls or halves over the middle of the field. And then we have a little hot read here to the running back. Okay. So we're probably peaking this and then maybe trying to throw here. And then this is going to come back and, and be kind of our, our check down read. So like this route combo from John. Again, Showtime sends six. So what do we get? We get uh, a scissor over here. So this guy's going to man up here. This guy's going to scissor to the back. So that's the purpose for the Texas route will be the scissor adjustment. So the user is going to have to kind of sit here. And this is actually just a great play call because watch this. See how the cloud's going to get pulled out here. And then as you see, we're setting up to be able to be throwing this right in this little pocket. So we'll see if this goes. And Showtime actually users this, and he's, again, just a step behind. John's trying to put it right here. 
which is pretty nice little throw, and he just doesn't catch it. So a little bit, a little bit too much bend on the ball. And you see the pressure that six one does, and this is what makes six one really good. Is you know you can you can send pretty fat, not just good, not just good pressure, but fast pressure. Here's a little rollout corner, almost hits it again. And that seems to be one of his big plans for six one is to try to roll using the cross screen blocking to try to roll out and throw a corner out against this defense. It seems to be, you know, kind of John's uh, strategy here in the first drive. Going to go to Verge running back streak. This is great. So this is one of the things that happens in six one. So one of the strategies here, Showtime's being a little bit aggressive trying to get a stop. Not sure why. But the adjustment here, I don't know if he just misses an adjustment or if he just wasn't planning on this, but he's going to send six, okay, as you see, send six. And then we have basically cover two here, and this appears to be a cross man, probably either on the tight end or the slot. So we just leave this basic cloud flat here. So if I'm a user, I've got to get over there. Um, and he you know, ultimately doesn't. John's going to throw the touchdown. Yep, so this is a cross on the slot. He has to take the tight end. I mean, there's a lot open on this play. <laughs> there's a lot open on this play. And John is going to be able to get on the board early relatively easily. Now, John is also – oh, he actually goes for two. We've got to take a look at that. Um, spoiler alert, he gets it. So John is also going to be in six one. This is something that I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of going on this year. Haven't seen it as much in years past, but he's using CJ Stroud as his backup quarterback, probably because he has some ability for free. And I'm not sure what it is. It might be set feet. I don't know what it is. Gunslinger something. Um, gift. Oh, it's gift wrap. It's probably gift wrap. That's why he does that. I think he uses. Let me let me actually just check real quick because I have the Mutt database up here. Let's see what CJ Stroud has. It's got to be gift wrap for zero. And I'll explain why that's important um, in just a second. Uh, so CJ Stroud, the playoff card, not the team of the year. Let's see. Yep, CJ Stroud gets gift wrap for zero P. So the reason that um, the reason that, that is important is due to the fact that. There's actually this actually happened in a tournament. Somebody did that little play, that little rollout play on a field goal block, and they they didn't have gift wrap and they dropped the wide open touchdown. So that's the idea. Put CJ Stroud, gift wrap, zero AP, able to do some stuff like that uh, down there in the in the in the red zone, kind of a sneaky way to get a two point conversion because we know how hard it is to score in that in that area of the field. Okay, so John Beast is also going to be in 6-1. Now, his 6-1 is going to be a little different. I would say John Beast is going to run a little bit more of a passive 6-1 than what we see from Showtime. Showtime ran a fairly aggressive since 6. And I say that I think he is starting out with a pretty heavy blitz here. Um, RPO, which is, you know, really the ultimate thing with 6-1. I think 6-1 is, is a really good defense. The biggest thing that it tends to struggle with is RPOs. But, I mean, every pretty much every defense struggles with RPOs. But I think 6-1 does struggle with it a little bit more than most defenses. And we actually are seeing John kind of heat him up. That's probably just trying to get a quick stop. So we see very aggressive defense here from John. And there's another RPO and another dot, basically. And as we see... You know, this is going to be the chess match, right? Showtime does not want to play. Most people don't want to play 6-1 just straight up and dot it. What they want to do is they want to kind of Mickey Mouse RPO their way down the field. So we'll see kind of how John counters that. Um, but 6-1, the, the biggest thing that I think 6-1 does defensively for a lot of people is it just makes you uncomfortable. It's an uncomfortable, as you see right there, John's going to send six. Let's take a look and see if he shows the coverage. Let's see here. Nope. Not going to show the coverage. Okay. So we're going to get a send six. And this is, in my opinion, the best way to block six one is to block your tight end. He actually doesn't. He blocks his running back, which is probably why I got screamed at. But anyway, blocking your running back is really not good against six one. It doesn't really pick it up. So essentially, we're going to get a three, cover three here probably with either a shaded down yellow or a shaded down purple. It's probably a shaded down yellow. It just takes away this quick throwing lane right in here. And it allows John to kind of come over here and take away anything quick to the left side. Um, the, we understand 6-1 Blitz enough to know that it's going to come in in about a half, like a second and a half. You see he gets this gap pressure. So at this point right here, this is all John has to do is either go here or go here. But just take away the quick routes. 
which is uh, what he's able to do here. So you see, see how he goes to the left right there to take away that in route? Because this is the only route he can throw. This appears to be actually a curl flat or some type of cloud. Uh, but anyway, he just takes this because he understands this initial throw is dead. We have so many KOs now that you're going to be able to KO any seam streak. And so it just closes off a lot of the throwing lanes, and he's able to get a big sack on first down. All right, so second 18, Showtime probably going to go to RPO. We'll see what he does. And uh, let's take a look here. So, again, we're going to get a pretty good pressure. Um, see, it appears he's going to send a five-man blitz. And then uh, we're going to man up the tight end, it looks like. So the purpose of the man up is to take away verticals. Now, this throw off rip is wide open. And we're probably just relying on KOs or tackles in that situation. So as you see here, he has to scramble away. And you see we get three, three. And then we get a cross man, like scissor action here. And then he just basically has to do that. So John B's pretty much set a very good verticals defense. Showtime misses the early read of verticals. Ends up scrambling around and making one of the craziest throws. Probably the, that was a pretty crazy throw. All right. So next, um, next, next play RPO again. One of the things you see John doing is he, this is kind of an interesting thing. He's actually like, when he's just basically clicking on and swinging the players out wide to try to contain the RPO. So his basic strategy is to try to contain the RPO here. I love this. This little play, um, this is actually really interesting defense. So take a look at this here. So pretty aggressive. We've got a hard flat. The purpose of this deep half is probably because if he runs verticals, this deep half can play the crosser pretty good uh, with the KO abilities. And then I'm not 100% sure the purpose of the hard flat. I would assume it's to try to grab a drag, and then maybe like a quick flat. I feel like shaded down yellows against this type of defense, a shaded down yellow plays a little better, but he, you know, obviously is there for a reason. And this is just a basic, basically an inverted cover two here. And then we have this hard flat. So he's kind of trying to take anything quick to the flat. And then we have to understand the user lurk because this half is down here so much. If he doesn't see a corner route, he's able to kind of roll back and take the middle of the field with his user. So we'll see. And this goes now against this alignment. I actually probably would zone this guy out because we know that this five man is pretty consistent going to come in. So he ends up still sending six. We do get the flat. So he guesses right. And that might just been a tendency thing. So he's going to take the flat away. This deep half does a really good job of kind of taking the initial read of the C route away. Hard flat takes away the verticals, and now look where his user is at. He just has to basically take these two that are in the middle of the field. The blitz at this point is coming free, and that's a tight window throw right there. That's actually a really good read. Wow, that's a tough, tough, tough throw. That's Y curl. Man, that's a good throw. So, yeah, Showtime is definitely in the Jets playbook. And John is in the... Uh, Colts on offense. So here we go. This is what six one's best at uh, is this red zone. So I want to show real quick what we have here. Actually, we'll talk about it in just a second. So you see a good red zone defense. So what makes this defense so good in the red zone is it just throws, it, it closes off throwing lanes. So we have these curl flats. He might have these zone drop to 20. He might um, because he's not, he's not doing Mabel. He's not running Mabel coverages. So what we basically have here is he's going to be able to really take away the any kind of corner here. This hard flat will roll down for any RPO. The real reason why it's really good in the red zone is you can use these guys on hard flats in the red zone, and then you can use your safeties to kind of fill in these back corners, right, of the – and this allows then for your user to be able to sit right in the middle of the defense. So this is a very good red zone coverage. And we'll see – um, again, the random dis – see, there's random disengage. That's why I love 6-1. That, that right there is, is why 6-1 is so good. Um, you get these random disengages, these random pressures when you're only sitting four. So here we go again. We have hard flat. So here we go. Uh, I don't know why we have two purples there, but he'll, he'll probably fix that. So I don't think he's using dro zone drops, at least on his flats. So he's a hard flat, and then he has a cloud on the outside here. So this is going to take away anything to the left side. He's got this little quarter here for like a post or anything like that. And then it looks like he's going to lurk on someone and actually use her. So we'll see what he ends up doing with his coverage here, moving some people, getting some more space there. He's actually going to use that cross man and lurk on the D end. 
and we get a run. Another reason why 6-1 is such a good run defense in the red zone is because of that. Now, here what John is doing is he's actually pinching his D-line uh, to help with the run support as well. And he gets a pick. This is uh, really important. So this, to me, is where the game is won and lost. In Madden 24, this section of the field is where the game is won and lost. And pretty much unanimously, the clear-cut best red zone defense is 6-1. So let's take a look specifically at what he does uh, to get this stop. So here we go. We got our blitz. And it appears like he crashed to his right and contained. Um, I'm not sure why he did that, but... You see here, crash, crash, and then these two guys are containing. We've, we've got, um, let's see here, we've got a cloud, it appears. We've got maybe a cross man and a cloud. We've got a little vert hook here. He's lurking right in here. I mean, the, the only place that he can throw is right in this area. This is probably a curl flat zone. Yeah, so you see. And we might have even hook curled this guy. But that is really nice. Great defense, stands up, talks about it. Big John. Big John Live is different. Big John Live is definitely different. I think John might be one of the better, like, personalities in the game right now, for sure. All right, so we're going to go trips. Now, John is in a spot here. Like, we can't take a sack here. And it looks like he's going to go double streaks here to the left side. So that forces this guy to man up. The user has to come over here. What John's probably going to look to hit is either this or this streak over the top. Ends up taking his flat. Good read. Get out of it. Just get out of the danger zone and now kind of get back to, you know, your main main offense. So that little audible to trips with the double streaks and the flat and the post of the tight ends, a really good route combo, especially if you put your running back to the left side, maybe throw him on a little in route, creates a little makeshift shallow cross concept. And uh, John takes his flat. The thing about 6-1, too, to me, I feel like when you play 6-1, you've got to be very disciplined offensively. If you're playing somebody that, you know, is, is they're mixing up, like, their blitzes, their coverages, they're mixing up, like, send five, send six, send four, send three, they're doing all of those different things, then you do have to be very disciplined in your approach. Now, I wanted to highlight this just real quick. Uh, notice that John, what he does here is he's going to put his running back on a blue route. Now, this is something a little bit new, but against 6-1, what a lot of people have started to do is use these little check-and-release flats. If this linebacker blitzes, the running back will block him, okay, typically. It also can, from what we've seen, mess up some of the other pressure. So using blue routes to kind of chip the blockers is actually something that a lot of people see here. See a blitz. He he actually sent sent him and uh, was able to pick up the blitz with just blocking the tight end and using that check and release. So um, just something new that we've kind of seen uh, really in this tournament. One of the big one of the big learnings of this tournament was to use blue routes uh, to attack six one. So a little little quick snap right there from John. John is so good on offense, man. He loves to just like he changes pace. He attacks different spots. Um, you know, I just, I just, a lot you can learn from John watching him play offense here. Here's a little cover two, got the corner, and he just knows how to throw those, man. That was, that was actually a total mess. He had it wide open, and uh, I don't know if the game cheated him or if he messed up the free form. It looks like kind of just fluky play there. Attack underneath, a little dig return with the post. Love that combo. It might have been bench pivot, actually, with the post. Really, really good. Yeah, it was bench pivot. So, yeah, I mean, you're seeing in this, and what John is doing is he's just, you know, honestly, he's doing a good job just taking what the defense gives him, nothing too crazy, all right, just keeping keeping the ball moving down the field, um, you know, kind of audibly and occasionally just to give Showtime different looks probably. And uh, typically what you're seeing is when he does audible, he's going to go to trips. Not a lot of bunch strong nasty up till this point, which is kind of interesting. He's going to go to this run here. Now, this is this right here is done because of the clock situation. What John is trying to do, I think he does have two clock on. He's really trying to take the clock because he could basically go up two possessions going into halftime, and I believe that Showtime is going to get the ball out of half. So here John double teams this defensive end or defensive tackle. Oh, to run the ball again. Gets out. Good. Jukes. 
brings up a second and eight. He gets the gets it under the two minute warning. So the whole idea. Yeah, let's see. I think this is just a simple flood. This is another thing that six one struggles with. When you leave these cornerbacks backed off like this, typically that means they're going to be in a deeper cloud flat to try to take away corner routes, which means these guys have to get out here. And I just found, have found consistently it is very difficult for that linebacker, just the way the movement is in this game. So what you'll see here is this little flat to the tight end. See how he kind of chips there? Boom. And at, at that point, John sees that. Tight end's open. Take his easy read. And get up the field. Another thing you're seeing John do is call a lot of flood. The purpose of that is probably to um, manipulate Showtime's zone drops. Here, in these key situations, another thing that's interesting to me, like third and inches, third and short, Showtime does a lot of show blitz looks. So, which is which most 6-1 players don't do that because when you when you do that, you can't really run a Mabel coverage from the outside corners and the purples from the safeties really, they don't, they don't do a great job uh, of defending corner routes. So anyways, another run again, this is clockwork. He's just trying to manipulate the clock. Even if he goes up 11 to zero, it's still a significant advantage for him to be up two possessions and going in half goes to that dig return, hits a nice dot over the middle. This is what is really important in these tournaments that does not get talked a lot about, but just the overarching game management from John to clock that is very underratedly like good. That is how you win at the highest of levels is managing the game, managing the situation, understanding the tendencies of your opponent. Those are some of the things that, you know, are kind of come from experience, but they, it's where you really learn how to win the game. I uh, see here, see that's intentional going down there gives him a good situation. And as you see, all of these timeouts are taken. So he's able to now take all of the clock and we're going to see him basically run the ball and either settle for three or use his run plays uh, to take as much clock as possible. You see John just taking a water, you know, he just understands the situation. He knows exactly what he's going to do. And he runs a stretch and he's going to take his free touchdown because he left showtime with zero timeouts. And, and now we're going to be interesting to see if he does go for two here. Now, John does this. I don't know that John would do this in an MCS game. I mean, he might, but situationally, I just don't know that he would. I think he's specifically doing this, um, you know, because he's playing showtime in a non MCS tournament in the off season to a degree might be why he's 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 doing this obviously he wants to win the game but i think you know could be a little bit of john to a degree messing around um which will come back to bite him here kind of an interesting red zone play that's an interesting red zone play so he goes to this scat play and what he does this is kind of interesting so what he has here is he has a little bubble screen this is a cool route combo we've got an in route here i don't know what the tight end's doing i guess he's a hitch and then we have this flat. So what John is looking to do is either... Th we'll see what he does here. I don't know for sure. He's anticipating that this gets manned up maybe. But this cloud gets sucked inside. There's no hard flat defender. And so this is wide open. I mean, this is a really nice dot from John. Really nice play. Great two-point play. Great two-point play. Probably something you labbed up just for this game. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to try that out out of the Colts playbook. So sixteen to zero, John in full control of the game. Eleven seconds. All he has to do is keep Showtime in bounds. We should see John blitz everybody here. Uh, the purpose of blitzing everybody is because in this year's game with the KOs and stuff, it it's hard to. I don't know why we have a vert hook here. That's an interesting choice. I'm just not sure what the purpose of that vert hook was. And wow, ooh, he almost got out of there. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of interesting end of end of uh, end of half uh, situational management. So that's the first half. John Beast is winning sixteen to zero. Showtime's got to make some ground up, but he is going to get the ball to start the second half. All right, guys, we're back for the second half here. John versus Showtime, and John is in full control. I mean, it's literally sixteen to zero. Uh, first half couldn't have went any better for John, and he's going to be on defense here starting out in the second half. So uh, real quick, again, 
this Audible to Trips is um, it's kind of an interesting one because a lot of comp players would say, and that was an interesting combo, and the fact that it wasn't a KO is kind of interesting, but a lot of comp players would say that 6-1 is the best Trips tight end defense, and I think it's pretty decent against these compression sets, specifically Bunch, Bunch Strong. Uh, I think it's really good against these compressed type sets. So, um, you know, anyway, just kind of interesting that the main thing we're seeing a lot of these guys do is this audible to trips. Their showtime goes to the play wide trail, able to hit that post. Um, this is where, you know, I think it hurts John a little bit. These safeties aren't more down in the box. That, to me, could be an argument for the show blitz feature of 6-1. Uh, and then here, that's a really nice dot. So he's in trips. Again, this is the main audible you're going to see. John actually slides this guy out. This guy's going to be on a flat zone. We're going to send one, two, three, four. He gets stuck on the fridge. Now, notice what he does. He hits circle again, and it puts him on a lurk artist defensive end. So it's actually a really underrated thing. And then it appears that we have basically a rolled coverage that is rolling over the tight end. So this is a half zone right here. Notice that the tight end corner is going to, clear that half zone and it's going to cause some space for this crosser to be thrown kind of right in this tight little window right here and as you see showtime able to hit a really really big route coming out of half and if he's able to get seven here he's not too far out of the game here so see what he does go to the red zone motion over the tight end kind of an interesting decision i think this is the rpo play it is the rpo play so we've got blitz Looks like we got a little hard flat here, probably a hard flat here, maybe a man up. Yeah, we got a man up here, which is pretty smart because um, it takes away that tight end throwing lane. And then he's able to hand it off, though, and just a lot. That's why the RPO is really good because it's a run pass option, meaning you can run it or pass it. So you have the choice uh, to be able to do a couple different things here. So a little two-point conversion time, and here we see um, kind of a, an exact copy here of uh, John Beast's defense. We've got a hard flat. We've got a hard flat, this man up right here with a vertical hook. I would assume that this is for maybe a running back wheel. I'm not sure why we man this guy up uh, for sure. This is probably a 30 uh, or 20 yard curl flat. What this is going to do is it will defend this back right corner. So the right side with the vert hook here. So basically this whole section of the field is defended by zones. We see the same thing where we're going to crash to the right. I'm probably assuming that that's maybe for a run defense. And then these contains are going to try to get out here and just make it harder for him to scramble. And then really the only thing that is open, if you look at this play art, is really this back right corner, which is probably where John Beast user is going to be running to uh, off the snap. Again, I'm not 100% sure why this isn't a curl flat zone. Um, I just think that'd be better. But um, yeah, what do I know? So anyway, let's take a look at the concept. So he mans up here, and somehow this guy goes here. I don't know why that happened. He must have been, this must have been, I don't know what that, what, what, it, what? He might have adjusted him. This is an interesting, I don't know what happened. This guy's manned up. That's weird. Did he send him? I don't know what happened there. But um, anyway, I think what happened, ah, I just don't know. I don't know for sure what happened, why that happened, the way it happened there. But anyway, he ends up getting the stop. Now we get onside kick. And John Beast is going to get the flag. So he's going to get the ball. So a failed onside kick. Now here's what I'm talking about with the safeties. So this is the show blitz alignment. So you see they're about five yards off the ball. I think this is really advantageous because they can get to a lot of places and they can take away a lot of these like throws in this section of the field. So... And then the other thing that you can do out of show blitz is you can still back these guys off to uh, about that same depth. So I might play around with that uh, in this defense. I think I'm going to – I don't know. I keep going back and forth between dollar and 6-1. I like them both. But here we get a max protect play from John Beast. This looks to me like double post. And we're just going to drag this receiver and then basically block everybody. It looks like this was like a little block and release drag. So there's that delay that I was talking about using that to pick it up. This quarter is going to be basically pulled by this double post post. So that crosser should be open to the sideline, which is what he's going to throw. And he's going to catch it and gets down. And, I mean, this looks easy for John. I mean, offense right now, I mean, he's looking really good. Don't think he's been stopped yet. Pretty much played perfect offense so far. 
And here is a red zone play. Let's see if he motions this out. So this is a concept I wanted to quickly touch on. What you're going to see John do, so he's going to go to the play corner out dig here out of the Colts playbook. And you see that you have this nice, deep, about 12-yard in route. He's going to block his running back in case they send a pressure. He's going to block and release the drag. Remember, we talked about the blue routes or the, the block and release drag routes, really good for helping to pick up 6-1. But then notice this route combo. We've got a corner. He probably smart routed this corner to try to get it to not run out of the back of the end zone because he's wanting to throw the ball right there. What he's going to do with this receiver is the only player that can get to that spot on the field is this defender. So we're going to put him in a little bit of conflict. He's going to hitch to the outside bunch receiver, but then you're going to see he's going to motion him out. Now, the purpose of the motion out is so this hitch gets on the number. So it's going to run. It's going to be about right here. Typically, what's happened in Madden is it will hold this guy here, and it will open up this throwing lane to the right side. So we'll see kind of how Showtime users this. He's lurking on the DN. And I think John has identifier, so he sees this. When you see that they're lurking here, it's almost a guarantee that it's not a blitz. So he immediately puts this guy on a streak because he doesn't have to worry about the pressure. So there's no threat of a pressure typically from here. Uh, be, you know, anyway, so that's, that's interesting to me too. But anyways, so we get a cross man, and it appears he's manned this guy up on somebody. And we're going to have it. So you can see here the rollout. This is open. This is going to be wide open right here to the right side. Uh, as you can see, the man coverage is delayed getting there. I mean, everything's working out perfectly. We're going to throw this, and this is wide open. This is exactly how you draw it up. And he's going to catch it. Touchdown. Really great red zone dot. Really great red zone dot. If you struggle to score, it's a great play, especially from about the 10-yard line and in. It's a really, really nice dot there from John Beast. And he's going to go for a field goal. So what this is going to do, why kick a field goal now? He's gone, he's gone for two twice, right? Well, um, 23 minus 6 is going to be 17. So John Bees has a 17-point lead, which is three possessions. Three-possession lead, played really well, and there's only about six minutes left in this game, six, seven minutes left. So, I mean, in complete control. So Showtime literally has to score three times to win the game without John scoring again. And if John scores, I mean, it's just, yeah, interesting. So John's going to play a little bit more Bimba Do Break. So we see here kind of a cover four. Um, this is this is like, you know, a really simple defense, but really good. It's just shaded down cover four. And then all he's doing is containing just to try to keep Showtime here so he can get the sheds from the interior. Really nice defense. And this is basically the strategy. We're just going to try to kind of basically take keep the lid on. Keep the lid on. That's what this defense is. We're just trying to keep the lid on, force him to take a lot of time. It's great situational defense from John. Get a little running back streak up the middle. Now, the only thing I'd like to see is I'd like to see if we're going to play this cover four, I really want these safeties down here. They're just going to play a little bit better, I feel like, if they he did that. And it just makes those makes that throw right there a lot harder. It makes the throw he just threw the running back a lot harder. Is Showtime, did he go past the line of scrimmage there? He didn't go past the line of scrimmage. Oh, I thought he did. Okay. So now John B is going to kind of mix in a blitz. Let's see what he does. See how he kind of manually moving people. Um, this is to try to take away this little streak. We see here. Good defense. And I like that he mixed in some pressure there. We don't want to just sit in the same defense every play. He's able to just kind of give him a little change up. Now he's going to stay with the blitz. And I think, let's see what happens here. Let me back this up so we can take a look at what he's doing. All right, so we're going to send. Now, he's doing it interesting to me. He's containing. I think that's for. No, he's actually going to do some man ups and stuff. So I'm not sure. I think he changed his mind. Um, but anywho, what we have is quarter, quarter, half with a little hard flat here. This man up probably tr just trying to take away any drag or bracket a C route. This will probably help bracket the C route to the left. And then on the right side, we've manned the tight end up. So if the tight end runs a flat, this man up's going to guard it better than a curl flat would. So the only thing you can really do really is verticals here to the right side. And he's going to motion this guy out. So it pretty much signals probably corner strike. Typically when they motion this guy out, he's going to be on a streak. And then we're trying to hit that, that C route to the left side. 
Let me see. Actually, a wheel route, post route, and oh my gosh. Wow. And this is why 6-1, I think, is so good. Watch what happens here. So John's only sending four, but look, look at how it breaks. See how it just breaks down quicker? If he has even just, ugh, I mean, even if he just blues this probably, I don't think he blewed it. That's a touchdown. I mean, that's a really good dot from Showtime and kind of perfect play call, and it just didn't work out for him because of the because of the the foundation that defenses are built upon, which is the ability to get pressure. Okay, here sends a five man off the right side. Don't love that. I feel like that didn't. I feel like that five man just didn't really make sense. The coverage integrity wasn't there. He's able just to kind of get bailed out, be able to just throw a quick flat. Here we go. This is the blitz right here. This is the best. To me, this is the best version of 6-1. So you have a five-man blitz here, okay? And then he's going to contain this guy. So how do you do that? Well, you're going to contain, and then you're going to manually re-blitz this side. This is a really good version of this because now you can man up here, take away the flap, this cloud. We can you know, play some really, really good kind of base five-man coverage. And then all we got to do is wrap up. And, he, oh, man, you see how good the juke is and... You know, just able to kind of get some yardage there. But I feel like that was pretty good defense all in all. I just got to make the tackle. And, you know, tackling is, is under, an underrated aspect of defense in Madden. All right, so we got trips, screen. Kind of, yeah, kind of an obvious play call there. And there you go. Showtime's got to get a stop. He's going to go for two here. I would assume. So this is a really big two-point conversion, so he kind of has to get this to stay in the game. If he doesn't get this two-point conversion, I forgot because he missed the two-point earlier. I forgot about this. So he kind of needs this two-point conversion here to actually, no, yeah, I'm just kind of surprised he goes for two, but the fact that he is going to go for two means he has to get it. So see here, this is standard John B's inside the five defense this is the crash right and contain. And then we've got a flat, a flat, verts, hook curl. I don't know why this is here. It's probably for the solo receiver on a post or something. So kind of interesting to me. But anyway, we'll see what he does. So this is a single back bunch out of Jets. He's going to pass. So we're going to probably run verticals here, which is probably a crosser. This guy's going to come right into this area, which is where the user is going to ultimately have to go. Yeah, kind of interesting play call here. And and there you see why that quarter should have been a middle third. <laughs> if that's a middle third, it's probably played. All right, so 23 seconds. So we're still winning two possessions. We're almost to the fourth quarter. We're not in a bad – John's still in a great position to win this game. Gets the onside kick recovery. I mean, the whole second half has been onside kicks for showtime. Really hasn't been able to sniff a stop all game, I'm pretty sure. I don't remember if he stopped him on the first drive or not. I don't think he did. I don't think he stopped him at all. So John's been playing pretty much perfect offense. Going to run the ball, get the clock going, try to get it to the fourth. You see they're going to sit back, take a breather, grab a beverage, and we're going to get into the fourth here. So we get a Mabel coverage from Showtime. John goes to flood, throws an absolute... <laughs> I think, yeah, he's got to have roaming on, on Bo. He's got to have roaming on Bo. Because that's a terrible, or it's a bad accuracy. And, yeah, anyway. I don't know if that's if roaming. Maybe, the, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He completed that. <laughs> um, I was surprised he threw that, actually. I mean, but anyway. RPO bubble on the ball. Tiki. So we got five minutes left in this game. I mean, even if, if John... Yeah, he can't really kick a field goal. I mean, he can, but it doesn't really help him that much to kick a field goal. So it's pretty much touchdown what we're looking for here. Touchdown pretty much wins the game. I mean, the game's pretty much cooked if he scores. Throw away. So that's why he's passing. Um, okay, so third and 11. But the underrated thing about him passing is this time is not being taken and timeouts aren't being taken. So third and 11, we got a little screen pass. This is what we've been doing a lot. Roll out. And then he's actually going to throw a little curl here. I probably with conductor able to get all those hot routes off. So you see, and this has been Madden this year. It's basically a skate artist. I mean, this guy's free. You can just outrun him to the sideline. See there? Almost 
Oh, my. Oh, that just didn't look good. So he's kind of forced into taking. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you, yeah, you go for this. You probably do. Fourth and 11. It doesn't really change the situation. So you probably do definitely got to go for this. Corner routes open. Throw it. Touchdown. And doesn't get his feet in. That's crazy. Wow. <laughs> yeah, this is perfect. I mean, the user's just late. It's really the only read on the play, but it's wide open. Gets a perfect accuracy right in the corner. And the sun god, oh my, look at this. <laughs> Does not able to get his feet in balance. Showtime gets the ball back. And now pretty big momentum shift. John's going to be blitzing here, plays great defense. You see the blitz, give him, yeah, I mean, this is, <laughs> you see 6-1, man. 6-1 makes people uncomfortable. It's why it's a really good defense. So we go in trips here. We got a third. We're going to use her this side. We're going to send people and just basically sending the five man with cover two to the right, cover three left, and then the user is going to basically be the, the flat. Runs out RPO screen. Not terrible defense, but we do get a juke there. Gives him a third and six. Going back to regular bunch. Maybe wide curl here. Maybe verticals. Motion over the tight end. The scissor. Got to expect the tight end to either block or be on a streak. He's on a streak. He's going to throw that. Oh. I feel like this is kind of an undisciplined coverage call. So, like, situationally, I mean... Yeah, I just, eh, I mean, I guess, but he stays with the scissor. And his plan is to use her this tight end, but he's just a step too late. And Showtime was able to get that tight end over the top. And now we're in, now we're in a game. <laughs> now we're in a game. Showtime's clipping it to show his friends. He's really happy with that. Going for two again. Same basic play here. So he's looking to throw this crosser right in this pocket when the user runs out here. It looks like he's going to throw it again, catch it. Yep, got it again. And that time I think John put a hook curl there thinking that would play it and get a KO. But KOs in the end zone, they don't really KO very well. Onside kick. Gets the onside kick. So John has not suffered from that fluke where you, you know drop an onside kick or whatever. Goes on conservative, and I bet the plan is – basically the plan is to try to get a first down or two and end the game. So we're going to try to Mickey Mouse our way to a first down. We're going to start out with this screen. This, this to me, is the best screen for trips or for 6-1 because it's just a numbers advantage. I mean, this guy can't get out there. This guy is going to struggle. You've got two blockers really for two defenders that they hold those blocks. This is wide open. So he's going to go to it here. And throw the screen. Get out. And that's pretty much perfect. Second and one's exactly what you want right there because you can take more clock. So now, I mean, first down continues to help out John. I mean, yeah, we're just trying to get to the two-minute warning here. And gets the first down. And this is looking, this is looking GG'd. Showtime goes in and takes his timeout. Now, now, John goes back on balanced right here. So he was on conservative. He goes back on a balanced. You don't fumble a ton, but there are fumbles in this game. And I don't know that you need to be on balance, but I think he wants to run the stretch. So he comes out, jukes. The game's over here. Right here, peanut punch, fumble. And ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. Now we have a game. <laughs> Man, this game went south quick for John. That is crazy. You get a peanut punch. As he's getting the first down and the game's over, he gets stripped. And then we see Tiki take about 30 jukes, get to the two-minute warning. And now, and then this is interesting to me, but watch what Showtime does. I mean, and that's why I just feel like, man, maybe he should have ran more RPOs. Just the... This defense fundamentally struggles against RPOs, and it's like, and I gotta have it situation. Would you rather run stretch against six one or when run RPOs? I mean, just looking back at this, I just feel like, you know, there's cer certainly fluke happened for Showtime, but 
when you see here, I mean, again, just RPOs. He's gonna Showtime's gonna run RPOs probably every play because he's just trying to get three. So now the whole situation has flipped, and basically John Beast is in the situation Showtime was just in because we know that he's not gonna miss the field goal. So if he's able to take the clock, the game's over. We we'll see here again. Now we should see a timeout, third and six. So now Showtime's gonna have to pass the ball, probably. And we'll see what happens. It's Christian Barmore. Everybody likes him. Let's see. Shade. Man, cross manning the running back here. Oh, this I remember this. So he cross mans the running back, throws right at him, catches it. <laughs> I guess you don't I guess you gotta have a man KO. First and ten. And this is pretty much it. I mean, John can't stop the clock. You can only stop it twice. First down and 10, RPO, run inside. I mean, it's an easy field goal right now, and I don't think he can take the clock. Yep, John can't stop it. That's going to be it. And that's going to be it. So he is going to have an iced kick. So Harrison Butker going to gonna have an iced kick for us. But Showtime is going to end up winning this game. <laughs> in a game that he was losing pretty much the entire way through. So that's why he sticked through it all the way through. Hope you learned something in this video. Really enjoyed watching these guys play.